Today we're going to be covering implementing Azure SSO within a tenant in Dscope. We already have our tenant created and we have our flow. Our flow is like this. We're going to have our optional IDP initiated. And then if it's not, we're going to go to a welcome screen where the user will input their email. If they click continue, it's going to go down the path of sign up or end via OTP. Otherwise, if they click SSO, it's going to continue with SSO. We'll now create our tenant. We're going to create our tenant of dscope.onmicrosoft.com and allow for self-registration to that tenant. We'll now go into that tenant, go to the SSO configuration page, and we're going to enter the details manually. Within Azure, we're going to create our own enterprise application. So we'll go in here, create our own, we'll call it SSO Live Tutorial. Click Create. We'll then set up single sign-on. We'll select SAML, we'll select edit. We'll then provide the entity ID, which we can copy from here within the tenant. And we'll also copy the reply URL, which we'll also copy from the tenant. We'll then click save and then exit here. We can now see the details of our SSO sign-on within Azure AD. We'll now configure the tenant with the details from Azure. We'll copy the login URL, paste it within the tenant. We'll copy the Azure AD identifier and paste it within the tenant. We'll then download the base 64 certificate. We'll open the certificate file within a text editor and copy the entire certificate, including the beginning end. We'll paste it within the tenant. We'll also set the tenant domain, which should be dscope.onmicrosoft.com, and then we'll save. We can then assign users and groups within Azure AD. Go to users and groups, assign users and groups. We'll click on this, and on the next page, we'll select the users and groups we want to assign. Here, I've selected the users and groups that I want to assign to the application. I'll click assign, and now we have the users and groups assigned. We can then customize our attributes and claims. So we'll click edit here, and we'll also go to SSO mapping within the tenant. Here we can update the custom claims. For ease of use, I'm going to change this custom claim to only be the email address without adding the namespace. I'll then copy this within Dscope, go back. We'll then change given name to display name, and we'll select display name. We'll then save this. We'll also remove the namespace. We'll update within Dscope to capture the display name. We can remove these two as we're not using them. And in this example, we're not using phone number, so we'll remove it as well. And then we can configure the group. So we'll click add a group claim. We'll select groups assigned to the application, source ID of group ID. And then we can also change this, only be groups, and click save. And now we have groups. We'll update this within Dscope. I can then go back to the users and groups that are associated with this application. We can then click on Chris group, copy the object ID for that group, add it here and map it to the tenant admin role, and then click save within Dscope. We can then test the SSO configuration by using Dscope Explorer. We can go to project settings and copy the project ID within the settings of Dscope Explorer and define our flow ID and then click update. We can then log in our Microsoft user. Here we'll be taken to the Microsoft sign-in. Log in, click yes. We can now see that the user's logged in and the name is populated, the email's populated, and it's associated to the correct tenant with the correct roles. If we go back to the user's page within Dscope and we select the user, we can see that the user's been created with the correct information and has been added to the tenant in the correct roles. To recap this tutorial, we implemented Azure SSO within a Dscope tenant and configured all of the attribute and group mapping and then tested logging in with that user.